Thank you, Pastor Porter, and, and thank you to uh, all of those that uh, were assembled here, are assembled here behind the cameras, uh, that uh, took the time to uh, reach out and connect, not just with me, to, to one another, uh, to talk about uh, the state, not only of the state of California, but the state of this nation, and more broadly, uh, the world uh, that we live in. Uh, today's meeting, like so many that I've had, is are humbling. Uh, the voices of concern, consternation, anxiety are real. They're raw. Uh, and I recognize foundationally and fundamentally that so often uh, people in my position uh, are inadequate to the moment. Uh, so often we try to meet the moment with rhetoric. Uh, we feign resolve. We make a point to assert uh, a new paradigm. Uh, and yet over and over and over and over again, we hear the names of those whose lives have been lost, have been taken, justice uh, that was never advanced, uh, and communities continuing to feel that they're not only being torn asunder, but not being listened to. Uh, and I fear, as I know many Americans fear, uh, that we could be back in that moment. Every moment when you're in it feels like it's a different moment. Every moment when we're in it, we feel like, well, this time we're going to do things fundamentally differently. Yet, over and over and over and over again, we don't meet that next moment. Over and over and over again, we fail to rationalize the goodwill, and we fail to materialize uh, and manifest the ideals that we so often assert. And so I come here today place of worship, humbled by that past, humbled by the fact that I've been part of that past as a former county supervisor, as a former mayor, as a former lieutenant governor, as a governor of the nation's largest state. The question I have to ask myself, the question we have to ask ourselves, are, are we capable of not just meeting this moment, but capable of doing justice to the moments in front of us? I could put together a group of advisors. I put together a task force. I could promise and promote a few pieces of legislation. When I said this on Friday, I'll say it again. Program passing is not problem solving. You got to change hearts, minds. You got to change culture, not just laws. And we have to own up to some very difficult things. The black community is not responsible for what's happening in this country right now. We are. We are. Our institutions are responsible. We are accountable to this moment. Let's just call that out. We have a unique responsibility to the black community in this country, and we've been playing slip service about that for generations. Generations. Just the, things move away in headlines, and we indulge on the margins, but we don't systemically, foundationally address the root of these issues. We prune. We don't tear out the institutional racism from all of our institutions, large and small. We don't. And we know that. And the community knows that. You're seeing that manifested out in the streets in the last five days. They know that. The question is, do we do deeply understand that? Do we or are we prepared to do something differently about it. Each and every one of us watching, what are we going to do differently, foundationally, fundamentally, not in the short run, but in the long run, to do justice to this moment? People have lost patience because they haven't seen progress. So if you're out there saying, well, people need to be patient, consider. People have lost patience for a reason. They've been told that over and over and over and over again. Not just the 52 years I've been around. My parents, my grandparents, their parents' generation heard the same. Just be patient. Heck, I've quoted Dr. King on ad nauseum, a long arch of history bends towards justice. You've made progress. But this is a manifestation of everything we've been promoting that we haven't delivered. People have lost patience. And if leaders 
And if leaders are going to meet not just this moment, but the moments in front of us, we better start listening. We better start hearing people. We better own up to our own responsibility, own accountability that led to this moment. Society becomes how we behave. We are our behaviors. Each and every one of us has an obligation to do more and better. And folks in my position, more still. I get that. I own that. But leaders can be found everywhere. Leadership's not just some fancy title. We are desperate for leadership in this country, desperate for leadership in the state of California, desperate for leadership in communities large and small. Leaders can be found anywhere. You don't have to be something to do something to soften the edges and in the spirit of Bobby Kennedy make more gentle the life of this world. Dr. King didn't wait to become President of the United States to exercise his authority. Every day he shared his moral authority. Each and every one of us has the capacity to exercise their moral authority every day. And we need moral leaders now more than ever. Each and every one of us has that capacity, resides inside of us. It's our capacity to lead by example, to find our better angels, to focus on the things that unite us, not what divide us, and to reinforce a sense of optimism because we recognize we have to do things differently and we're resolved to prove that, not just assert that, and to hold ourselves to account because each of us will be judged and judge each other to the extent we do justice and advance our cause in a different way. And so I am here as your governor, humbled over the course of the last five days, resolved to keep the peace, but recognizing that an armed camp is not a place of peace and that the answer to violence is not more violence, and then if we're going to create the conditions to truly advance police, people have to know we mean it. And they have to know that they matter and we care. And so for those of you that are out there protesting, I want you to know you matter. And I want you to know I care, we care. And I don't want to just demonstrate that rhetorically. I want you to know that I have a unique responsibility to prove that to you, not just to serve. You've lost patience, so have I. You are right to feel wronged. You are right to feel the way you are feeling. And we, collectively, society has a responsibility to you to be better and to do better. To those that want to exploit this moment, that want to flame the violence and fear, we hear you as well, but we don't have the same sensitivities as it relates to those that are trying to exercise their voice from a place of hurt and pain. When you try to cause pain on others, when you're out there to exploit conditions, not advance the cause of justice, that is not serving the greater good, and we need to also call that out. The looting, the violence, the threats against fellow human beings that has no place in this state and in this nation. We as a society need to call that out. And we need to call forth our better angels and those that want to express themselves and have thank you. God bless you. Keep doing it. Your rage is real. Express it so that we can hear it. Let's not let others drown out that rage and those that want to advance this cause in a responsible and thoughtful way. I'm not patient any longer. I know you're not. We hear you, and we have a responsibility now to prove to you, not just to assert, that we're capable of being more and doing better as a society and a community. And so I just, again, want to express 
my deep gratitude, my deep humility to those leaders of every stripe that all across this state and all across our nation are doing justice in this moment. Those demonstrators that were reaching out and trying to calm other people, to those community leaders that were out there with brooms in the early morning sweeping up glass, to folks that, you know, were on the periphery that said, you know what, I can't stand on the periphery any longer. I need to be part of this effort. Thank you to all of your examples as well. So much good and so much right that's out there, but there is a stain in the history of this country we have concealed, and it's rearing its head again because we never come to grips with it. We've never owned it. It's the issue of racism. The pastor is exactly right. Pandemic on top of a pandemic, impacting our health, impacting our economy, and impacting our capacity to live up to our greatest ideals. We could talk about being bound together by a web of mutuality, as Dr. King said. And if that's the case, we need to reconcile that fact that we are all in this together. The Bible teaches us we're many, many parts. But at the end of the day, we're one body. And when one part suffers, we all suffer. We have an obligation to reconcile the fact that our fate is tied to the fate of others. South Africa called Ubuntu. I am because you are. Time for more empathy, more care, more capacity to collaborate. A society that's about dominance and aggression, this is what you get. Not because of the protesters, but the conditions that led to this moment where protest was inevitable. So we are committed and resolved to bringing peace back to the streets, not only in this state, but to support the efforts all across this nation. We'll do our part, but it's not just a situational moment. We have to focus on the medium and long term, and we have to prove our commitment and our resolve in that space. So I just want to thank all the leaders, not only again assembled here, but throughout this state once again for your courage, because now is a time for courage. Now is time for your voice to be brought to the forefront. And let me thank all of those that are doing their best to keep people safe under very difficult circumstances and all of those uh, leaders that are out there supporting others, keeping people safe, our communities, large and small, all across the state of California safe at this very trying and difficult moment. So with that, we're happy to take any questions. We are, of course, happy to uh, also uh, step aside and have members of the community uh, respond as well. Thank you, Governor. Sophia Bolag here from the Sacramento Bee. I'll be asking questions on behalf of the press corps today. Um, many of us would like to know what your reaction is to uh, Trump's comments this morning to governors to get tough on protesters. Uh, my reaction is the meeting I just had. My reaction are the words that I just spoke. My reaction is my commitment to the people of this state, the most diverse state and the world's most diverse democracy, to focus on the things that unite us, not what divides us, to make sure people are safe, but to make sure people recognize that there's something that lies deep underneath that has come to the fore that needs to be dealt with, with an equivalency of energy, focus, and resolve. Uh, we will provide the resources as needed uh, to members of our community leaders all up and down the state of California, but we must resolve to provide those resources to address these systemic problems uh, at the same time. You've avoided criticizing the president since the start of the pandemic. Should we interpret your comments today as a criticism of what he said this morning? I have a choice. We all have a choice. I could be part of the daily back and forth in the news cycle and continue to perpetuate the problems that persist in this country. I could choose to go back and forth and just be another uh, voice in that cause. Uh, or I can choose to focus a message that I think is so much more powerful and I hope 
more residents, people watching, and that is I care more about them than some of the noise I heard on a morning phone call. Um, you said that the country needs leadership right now. Do you think that uh, the president is providing adequate leadership? As I said, leadership can be found anywhere. In the absence of leaders, of people in positions of formal authority, we have people that exercise their moral authority each and every day. Church leaders, community leaders, faith-based leaders of all stripes, teachers, parents, caregivers, people, strangers walking the street that exercise their moral authority by trying to soften the edges of people that are apt to do more harm and create more violence. Leaders in law enforcement that meet this moment, that recognize the empathy that's called for as well. Uh, that kind of leadership is desperately needed in this nation and is ample if people begin to exercise it. And that's my hope and that's my resolve, is to find those leaders to call for more of that kind of leadership in this country. Tim Pucco of the Wall Street Journal would like to know what the plan is tonight for managing protests and dealing with break-ins and theft, and in particular, what changes or tactics you're supporting to de-escalate confrontations, violence, and damage. Well, we're working with mayors in cities and counties, large and small, sheriffs, uh, and obviously working with leaders of the community, not just those in law enforcement, uh, to exercise more uh, control, more authority, again, moral authority, not just formal authority, to address the issue of violence. Uh, as many know, uh, we have been working with mayors on deploying uh, National Guard, the two resources the state of California has from a law enforcement perspective, California Highway Patrol, which has been on tactical alert for days, 12-hour shifts uh, up and down the state of California, working in mutual aid positions, pre-positioned, and also uh, in strike teams to react. Uh, the National Guard was brought up. Uh, over 3,400 National Guard's men and women uh, were called up. Today, we added another 1,100, so we have over 4,500 National Guard men and women. Uh, uh, that are available throughout the state of California. Uh, part of the protocols of mutual aid, it's a bottom-up process, not a top-down process. Uh, mayors working with their chiefs, uh, working to coordinate and collaborate the deployment of those teams. Uh, the National Guard, uh, as you know, have been, uh, have been already distributed parts of the state disproportionately concentrated in Southern California, but in Northern California, uh, we have people pre-assembled. Uh, we have folks in other parts of the state uh, that have been called back up, but uh, thousands and thousands of National Guard's men and women, uh, by the way, uh, who are also members of the community, uh, many putting on their uniform, dentists, doctors, folks that work in construction uh, that are part uh, of that group uh, that are participating uh, in making sure that we keep the peace uh, and will continue to uh, meet the requests, we believe, of. Uh, every mayor and uh, every uh, police chief in the state We've done so so far and we intend to continue to. So are you waiting for local leaders to ask you for help uh, before deploying more National Guardsmen and women or are you proactively sending them to places that you think need help? Well, you cannot proactively send them in without creating more problems than you fix. If the state of California from the state capital is sending National Guards, men and women, without concurrence, support, collaboration, and coordination through the mutual aid system, through a spirit of collaboration and support at the county level and the local level, uh, then that's a recipe for more problems. The process we have today is well-established, very formal. It's a mutual aid process, uh, established uh, as just two proxy examples in the Bay Area, in Oakland, and in San Francisco. San Francisco had mutual aid yesterday from Tulare County, from Santa Barbara County, other parts of the state coming in to provide mutual aid into the city and county of San Francisco. Uh, similarly, mutual aid from surrounding regions into Oakland, other parts of the state, uh, a mutual aid approach first, working with CHP to help coordinate and collaborate uh, as it relates to efforts uh, on freeways, as it relates to uh, jurisdictions uh, where those lines begin to blur, and then the National Guard on top of that to come for logistical supports. But all of that is done through a command and support structure that has a local framework uh, that is appropriate in order to keep 
all of these jurisdictions and keep the law enforcement approach uh, in a very organized manner and keep people safe. Are you planning any statewide actions to deal with the protests tonight, like a statewide curfew or anything like that? Uh, we believe the conditions are very different in Del Norte uh, versus other parts of the state, Imperial, or places in San Diego, different than even uh, here in the Bay Area. So each and every jurisdiction, as a former mayor, I understand this intimately, uh, has made determinations based on conditions as they see them in real time. Curfews as early as 1 p.m. Uh, in some parts of the state, uh, others uh, as late as 8 p.m. And that is a determination made uh, by the experts on the ground based upon the conditions uh, in their communities. Statewide, we have 7,000 California Highway Patrol. Uh, again, full tactical alert have been for days uh, with protective gear all up and down the state of California. Uh, working again to deploy the National Guard, an additional 1,100 uh, guardsmen and women uh, that are deployed uh, just today. Uh, thousands over the last few days. We are looking, we have many National Guardsmen and women working on COVID response. Uh, we are looking at a subset of those on COVID response to see if we can preposition and make uh, them available uh, to meet the needs of uh, communities all across the state of California. So substantial support from the state of California um, and obviously robust local support, mutual aid system well defined, well organized, and a county overlay with the county sheriffs working with CHP and ultimately uh, with the National Guards. The next question is from Jill Cohen of the New York Times. She would like to know how worried you are about the spread of COVID-19 at these protests and how the state is tracking any related spread. And after we saw testing sites close in Los Angeles as curfews went into effect, how are you and local health officials ensuring that protesters can get tested? Well, we want to make sure everybody can get tested. I encourage people uh, to go on the covid19.ca.gov website, type in your zip code, and you'll see the closest site for testing available and open today. Uh, yesterday, we conducted over 67,000 tests, uh, day four and five, uh, into uh, this very challenging period. Uh, so people are being tested uh, substantially so all throughout the state of California, even in the midst uh, of this latest challenge. And so we encourage that uh, from public health and public safety perspective. And we want to make sure we continue to provide more sites, uh, more points of access for people to get tested. Uh, and obviously, uh, when those testing sites open, uh, to deal with the backlog as it relates to those individuals that otherwise would have gotten tested, uh, which again, we continue to encourage people all throughout the state with symptoms and those that are asymptomatic uh, that may be uh, in an environment uh, where they're more vulnerable prospect of the spread of this disease. The next question is from Kathleen Ronane of the Associated Press. You've said you were monitoring violent extremist organizing. Have you found any evidence of such groups infiltrating the protests? And if so, who are they? And do you think that the police are handling them appropriately? Yeah, they're well defined all throughout this country. Their names you've heard of, names I don't even particularly want to reinforce and promote, which is their intent and their interest. Uh, but they are well defined, those same names, those same groups. Uh, that many do come from out of the communities of which they're creating havoc. Many come from uh, other parts uh, of not only uh, the, well, let's be honest, other parts of the country. Uh, many are homegrown uh, to monitor all of these groups, and it's our intention uh, to continue to collaborate and share that information. A lot of it's generated by the federal government, a lot by the state, uh, and then a very well-organized system uh, that uh, has existed for some time in this state uh, where we share that in real time with local law enforcement. Uh, but that is also a two-way conversation, local law enforcement sharing uh, what they're hearing in real time as well. So uh, we are monitoring those groups. And I will say this, I don't think, because I've been deeply involved uh, in terms of the collaborative spirit uh, and engagement at the local, regional, federal level. Uh, it's been an incredibly uh, focused and very effective system, and I'm pleased uh, with the communication uh, flow between those respective agencies and those jurisdictions. 
I understand that you don't want to name the specific groups, but could you generally characterize what type of extremist groups you're talking you about have, here? You, look, you have the groups that are hell-bent on creating problems and anarchist groups. You've got the folks that are well-defined, uh, that uh, have been highlighted by the president and others. Uh, and there are other groups out there that are organized, some less organized, and uh, some uh, that uh, individuals that are not even organized that uh, certainly are looking to create havoc. I, don't by any stretch I'm suggesting uh, we hide these names. These names are well reviewed, well received, but I also see every time elected official like me mentions them, uh, they start to be spread between their supporters. And with all due respect to some of these groups, I'm not going to give you that privilege right now. Genoa Barrow of the Sacramento Observer asks, Locally, African-American protesters have been injured, shot in the face with rubber bullets, not far from the Capitol. She would like to know if you can address this and if shooting into a crowd of people is justifiable in this situation. Yeah, I don't know specific issues uh, related to those incidences, and I'm happy to get more details about those incidences. Uh, all across the state, we're monitoring from Bakersfield to Modesto, Fresno, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, uh, LA, San Francisco, uh, San Jose, uh, up northern parts of the state. Uh, we've been monitoring all across the state uh, activity. And, uh, and all I could say this is we want restraint. Uh, we want much expression of respect uh, with law enforcement uh, and protesters as humanly possible. Uh, empathy, understanding, again, a collaborative spirit. Uh, but we also need peace, and we need to protect small businesses, and we need to protect people that are scared, that they're behind walls with their children, they're scared about their safety as well. And we need to call out uh, those that are 